and of course, the Russian mogul with the 2045 Immortality Project. These are all within reach in a few decades here in terms of at least their attempt. So, and, and, and you'll see it coming. So, getting, getting FDA approval. You'll see it coming. So we're going to see it coming. You know, this is an interesting take because in so many ways, Scripture told us what's coming anyway. And so this is one of those grains of truths, perhaps, where, you know, maybe the timeline is different. It may not take a long time, you know, for it to appear, but this is the elite. This is the enemy. This is even, you can say, God warning us that these things are coming. And church, hello, wake up, wake up, church. Stop arguing about, you know, political stuff. I mean, yeah, there's a place for that, but hey, over here, look at all this stuff. This is out of control, and this is prophetic. It's in your Bibles. Approval for implantable or devices of any kind is quite quite difficult, um, and this will be a slow process where we will we'll gradually increase the um, issues that we solve until ultimately we can do a full uh, brain machine interface. Okay, so that's the goal. Until they can do, they're gonna they're gonna slowly go and and again, that's the thing. They got to get all these devices approved. So the FDA has the keys to how fast this thing is going to develop. It's not really up to Elon Musk. It's up to the FDA and their approval rating and speed. I mean, if they're going to approve something pretty dramatic, then I'm sure the scientists uh, with Neuralink, um, which which goes to show maybe, you know, what, what do they got going on in their laboratories? You know, what, what do they have experimenting where they're like, okay, you know, we're ready to do this. It's possible to do, you know, I guess they can say theoretically, but... Who knows? Anyway, that's that's going to be the lever of speed here is the FDA approval. And if they're going to allow crazy things, then I'm sure Neuralink will go ahead and push the envelope and, and keep moving stuff forward. Um, I guess this is a little bit of the imagery of what it looks like. Electrodes coming into our neurons. Oh, I mean, come on, folks. This is like the last place where we have privacy is our thoughts. It's our mind. And here we have this giant electrode just intruding in iron will try to mix with miry clay but they will not cleave to one another goodness gracious we can do a full uh, brain machine interface uh, meaning that we can it, it, uh, ultimately <sighs> short circuit short circuit <laughs> elon musk having brain chip malfunction I mean, no, I'm joking, but I'm not. I don't know. It's kind of weird, man. He's, he's a weird dude. Got to admit. Yeah, this is going to sound pretty weird, but um, achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. So uh, but this, is, this is not a mandatory thing. Um, uh, you know he's saying that because the criticism of Mark of the Beast is right there in our faces. <laughs> okay, let me repeat what he just said here. Uh, so the brain machine interface is going to be able to achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. So this is not a mandatory thing. Oh, it's not mandatory because that's a key word in understanding Revelation 13 and the mark of the beast and the worship of the image. Oh, it's not mandatory. Uh, this is a thing that you can choose to if you want. And, at this in, and uh, let's see, let's see what the rest of what he says here. This is a thing that you can choose to have if you want. Um, and and uh, this, this is something I think is going to be really important um, at a civilization level scale. So, um, and I, I've, I've said a lot about AI over the years, uh, but I, I think even in a benign AI scenario, we will be left behind. Um, and so, and hopefully it is a benign scenario, um, but I think with um, a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride um, and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. I think this is extremely important. So there you go. I mean, a straight up uh, public announcement of what's going on. I mean, we've been talking about this forever, but this is just a huge step in getting the public to just know about it. And that's part of the way things work. They tell you what they're doing up front and it gives them a sort of spiritual, in a spiritual sense, that it gives them a legal right to pursue this in the bodily form, if you will. 
I think the best joke you can come up with, because, you know, the other part of Elon Musk's big thing is Mars, it's totally within the realm of possibility to suggest that, hey, if they fake the moon landing and they deceived everybody through the TV screen back in the late 60s, this time, you know, they can't do that. It's too obvious. This time, they need the Neuralace. They need brain-machine interface to fake a Mars landing. And I mean, in theory, you know, if you're going to merge with AI, you're going to have all these uh, virtual spaces that you can access. Uh, who's to say that they can't fake a Mars experience <laughs> if you merge with AI? I mean, it, it's absurd, but at the same time, it's not. This is not me being absurd. This is the words coming out of Elon Musk, billionaire, mogul, the man behind Tesla, clearly someone who has been bred for the continuation of the beast system and the arrival of it. So while most people complain and argue over political things, which again has its place, the bigger picture here is that these agendas continue forward and most of the people are too busy doing something else to really care, especially believers. Too many of them are distracted and not paying attention to this type of information that is public. It's clearly public. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of pastors on the weekend, they see this, I'm sure, I'm sure there are tons of pastors across this country and around the world who see this type of information and in their gut has a sort of eerie or uneasy feeling that, hey, maybe this is really, uh, you know, a little too close to comfort when it comes to some of the prophetic visions suggested in the Bible in terms of the mark and the image. Um, and, and just a quick message to those who think that this, uh, those prophecies are already fulfilled, the preterist view or partial preterist. I think that there is a repetitive nature to prophecy. There's nothing new under the sun. So the typology of fulfillment, if you look at that, I think it's entirely possible that there were types of fulfillments um, back in 70 AD and uh, relating to some of the things that overlap this seem to suggest a connection to the scriptures and what it says, but uh, you got to admit that in this modern context, this uh, you know whatever you would call it, post postmodern, people are dying for the next phase. You know, what's we're we're done with postmodernism. What's next? Uh, whatever that era will be called, <laughs> um, that era is definitely ripe with uh, a sort of prophetic or biblically prophetic implications to what's happening and, and what's happening to our biology, what's happening to our environment, everything. So I don't think it's one or the other. I think it might be both. And what I'm saying is that, hey, we might have to really put those differences aside when it comes to some of the nitty gritty of theology to spread the greater message of the gospel in this time. So that's just my thoughts on this. Let me know what you guys think. Have an awesome day. God bless. Shalom, my name is O, which is the Hebrew word for light. If you already knew this, you must have a special interest in the Hebrew Bible. But if you've never heard the word O before, let this be one of the first Hebrew words you learn with us at the Israel Institute of Biblical Studies. I am a teacher of Biblical Hebrew, and I teach my classes online. For me, teaching online is a unique experience because I get to meet people from all over the world who share my passion for the Bible and its original language. In our classes, you begin by learning the Hebrew alphabet and end up reading the Bible independently, understanding the deepest verses of the Holy Scriptures and unearthing new meaning that has been over the eons lost in translation. Our courses explore the linguistic and cultural aspects of the Holy Scriptures and are fully accredited by the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. I invite you to take part in this wonderful journey. Let us meet and study Hebrew together, share our thoughts and understand what the Bible really says in its original language. I will be right here in Jerusalem while you will enjoy the comfort of your own home. See you in class. Listen to this. 
CNN, let me just show you how it's played. CNN is Canaan. Okay? All right? Canaan was named after Cain. Okay? So the interesting thing is, is that... One second here. Just give me one second. Okay. rocket equation. It's a beautiful thing. No astronaut launches for space 